And it looks like we're wrapping up uh, 1 Kings. We're at chapter 22, verse uh, 35. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians and died at evening. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. Notes. In other words, the servants of Ahab propped him up in the chariot until he died. And he must have been a very, very bad wound because he was bleeding all over the place. Verse 36, And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. Notes. Well, think about this. It does not appear that Israel had been just utterly defeated or had suffered any kind of great loss, but the king was dead, and so now they retreated. Verse 37, So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. Notes. This is exactly as what the prophet Micaiah said would happen. Verse 38, And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor, according unto the word of the Lord which he spoke. Now keep in mind, uh, notes, now keep in mind that this prediction was given by Elijah in 1 Kings 21, 19. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, and all that he did, and the ivory house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? Notes. The, the Lord loved Ahab, and sought to save him again and again, but all to no, all in vain, basically. Uh, an empty effort by God. Verse 40. So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah... His son reigned in his steed. Notes. Now, the name ah Ahaziah actually means whom Jehovah upholds. Ahab giving his son this name suggests that, notwithstanding his idolatries, that Ahab had acknowledged, he had acknowledged the Lord to some extent. However, despite the constant spiritual tug, he just simply would not serve the Lord. Verse 41. And Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Notes. Now in this book, Jehoshaphat's reign is disposed of in ten verses, but 102 verses are devoted to it in uh, Second Chronicles. Well, the meaning is very clear. To the unspiritual eye, Jehoshaphat would have been uninteresting beside the glitter and pomp of Ahab, but to the spiritual eye, which is given in Second Chronicles, Ahab is of no interest at all, with Jehoshaphat demanding God's attention. Both books of Kings portray events as men see them, with the books of the Chronicles portraying events as God actually sees them, and consequently, whenever I get to them, they're going to be quite different. First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings are to a point uh, how, how man actually sees things. First and Second Chronicles depict things as God sees them, and well, uh, the book itself will bear out that there are uh, what you would actually call contradictions in the text, but it's actually the way God sees them compared to these other four books, and we'll be picking up in them very, very soon. Verse 42, Jehoshaphat was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhi. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. Notes. Uh, there was to be only one high place for sacrifice, and that was to be at the high place known as the Temple in Jerusalem. So it seems that the Holy Spirit was displeased with Jehoshaphat's action and not taking away the high places. Uh, but uh, he, he, you got to admit that he did a pretty good job once we read about it. Verse 44, And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Notes. For some 70 years from the date of their separation of, to the time of Asa's death, there had been little peace between Judah and Israel. Jehoshaphat seeks to remedy this situation, but at times, as we have seen, uh, he used methods that were displeasing to the Lord. Uh, one of his main acts was seeking out the help of foreign kings, which God did not like at one bit. Verse 45, 
Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and the, his might that he showed and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the remnant of the Sodomites which remained in the days of his father Asa he took out of the land. Notes. There seems to have been very few Sodomites left. However, the Holy Spirit is quick to proclaim the fact that Jehoshaphat removed even these few. Too often the child of God is willing to allow the remnant of evil to his remain. The Holy Spirit demands that everything that is evil be taken out, which can only be done by the believer placing his faith exclusively in Christ and what he did at the cross. And, of course, like I've said, this then gives the Holy Spirit the latitude to work within our lives and thereby bring about the desirable results. Romans 6, chapter 6, verses 3 through 14. Romans 8. 1 and 2. There's a whole plethora of verses. Verse 47. There was no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tharshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they went not, for the ships were broken and at Izion Geber. Notes. Verse 47 implies that this, this particular officer was appointed to be king of Judah. In other words, Judah controlled parts of Edom, probably the whole thing. Verse 49, Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with your servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. Notes, Jehoshaphat formed an alliance with Ahab's son Ahaziah. However, the Lord was not pleased with this alliance and thereby destroyed the ships. Jehoshaphat would not permit Ahaziah to join him after that. He got the message. We're going to read about that in the books of Chronicles. Verse 50. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram, or Jehoram his son reigned in his steed. Notes. All of this is important regarding the kings of Judah because they were in the lineage of David from which would come Christ of course. Verse 51. Verse 51. Ahaziah the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked the anger of the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. Notes well, this was at least one of the reasons, uh, the primary reason that the Lord was so sorely displeased with Jehoshaphat forming an alliance with Ahaziah. And it ticked him off pretty good. And now we will begin in First Chronicles, picking right up. Thank you, and God bless.